Maging gabi sa tanan Narapod kita sa ika limang Domingo sa Kwarisma uh, uh, Ato ang gospel karon Kinutlo sa uh, Juan Kapitulo 12 versikulo 20 Nga sa 23 John chapter 12 Verse 20 To 33 So good evening Before we will start the uh, I will uh, ask you to be with me in uh, our opening prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. O God and loving Father, once more we are here gathered in your name to listen from you, Lord, the fifth Sunday of uh, Lent. We ask you, Lord, just to bless us with a heart of a listening heart, with a heart of a learning heart, from you as we listen your gospel Lord God with the loving intercession and accompaniment of the Blessed Mother we offer this uh, Bible online Bible study all these things we ask from you God in Jesus name most sacred heart of Jesus have mercy on us immaculate heart of Mary pray for us O glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Sa ngalan sa amhan, sa anak, sa Espiritu Santo. Amen. Uh, last Sunday is a literary Sunday. And uh, we need to rejoice, no? Because uh, it was then that after we we have gone through with the first, second, third Sunday of Lent, then uh, we have the Gospel. Uh, last Sunday that uh, God gave His only Son uh, to uh, uh, redeem us, to save us from our sinfulness. No? Meaning, it is a, a rejoice, uh, joyful. No? We need to rejoice on and be joyful because God gave His only Son. And uh, besides that, no? He forgive us and forget all our sinfulness. And this is a continuation of our gospel, no? The uh, fifth Sunday of Lent. So as we come closer to the end of the Lenten season and nearer the passion of our Lord Jesus, as uh, being said in the Litari Sunday, uh, the previous uh, gospel is about the uh, manifestation of the power of God ag against sin no? the first Sunday of uh, Lent second is about uh, this is my beloved son listen to him we have to listen and then the third one is uh, God give us a, the glorified body of Christ so uh, he show it to the disciples that is that is me I am the Messiah no and then rejoice because uh, he gave us his son Jesus to save us to redeem us so we will not just be an spectator therefore we need to be uh, to recall and be able to uh, partake ourselves and try to review ourselves and try to see how God loves us in the passion and death uh, on the cross no so these uh, sunday readings uh, lead us to an awesome event we should follow with the flow of the readings so that we will enter into the spirit of the passion and uh, we will not just watch no just like in the youtube but we have to be uh, in the scene we have to be uh, with Jesus in his passion and death so we need to be involved and be participants of course we are all guilty of sin and we need much more to partake so that we will be able to see and be able to uh, uh, achieve the benefits of the passion and death in this holy week so to uh, to be able to do this would make uh, Christ uh, 
Christ's uh, sacrifices on the cross, death on the cross because of our sinfulness, meaningful otherwise the other uh, the uh, counter uh, meaning of this is a meaningless uh, celebration of the Lenten season. So the first reading no the prophet is warning the people of Israel of Judah that because of their lack of faith and obedience to the laws of Moses and to God himself God will make void no God will cancel the covenant no make void cancel the covenant with them and make a new new covenant what but this time with different uh, terms and condition you know he's uh, referring god is referring to the new and everlasting covenant that is uh, being uh, uh, signed and uh, being sealed with the blood of jesus christ on the cross on his passion and death no on the cross with the responsorial psalm we have a uh, a penitential psalm at this time, the miserere, no? It is a reflection of the sin of David. But it can and should, not, uh, should be our prayer uh, of contrition for any and all offenses that uh, we might have committed. So, all of us are encouraged to read and meditate the entire psalm. Frequently during Lent, particularly on Good Friday. The second reading uh, is from the letter of Hebrew, chapter 5, verse 9, 7 to 9. No? Uh, the writer of the letter uh, to the Hebrew with this great letter has summed up in the single sentence the essence of Christ's passion and death. Both its human form and divine form, we must remember that although Jesus was God, he was also human. His suffering was real and more intense than we could endure. But through his sacrifice, he achieved the goal that was prophesied by Jeremiah above. No? He was man's, man's, mankind's uh, perfect offering and it had God's full acceptance signified by his passion and death and his resurrection. So the gospel reading huh, is John taken from John chapter twenty chapter twelve verse twenty to thirty three. Now among those who went up to worship at the feast were some Greeks. So these came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee. Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Andrew went with Philip and they told Jesus. And Jesus answered them. The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. He who loves his life loses it. And he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me. And where I am, there shall my servant be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Now is my soul troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, for this purpose I have come to this hour. Father, glorify thy name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing by heard it and said that it had thundered. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. 
Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the ruler of this world be cast out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. He said this to show by what death he was to die. Some Greeks were wished to see Jesus. Now among those who went up to worship at the feast were some Greeks. So this came to Philip who was from Bethsaida in Galilee and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip and went and told Andrew. Andrew went with Philip and they told Jesus. And Jesus answered them, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone, but if it dies, it bears much fruit. He who loves his life loses it, and he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me, and where I am, there shall my servant be also. If anyone who serves me, the Father will honor him. This is now the feast of the Passover. It is uh, springtime. Uh, it is a very good season in Israel. No? Hundreds of thousands of Jews came. In chapter 12 uh, begins the final act of life, Jesus' public ministry of three years. Remember, three years na siya nag-ministry, nag, uh, nag, uh, no? Because one half of John's Gospel, no? This is one half of John's Gospel. And one half of this, or one fourth of this, he said about the Last Supper, no? One part of Gospel of John talks about the Last Supper. Supper. For this uh, uh, season of Lent, especially uh, the fifth Sunday of Lent, the final week begins, no? Kumuyon mga Supper, the purpose of which uh, John uh, Gospel is writing is really for the reader to believe that Jesus is the Messiah. No? Nga nung gadibot man siya o one-fourth sa iyang gospel uh, just for the, for the last supper. No? Because uh, he wanted to uh, let his believer or the believer of Jesus uh, really affirm that uh, Jesus is the Messiah. And we have life, no? If we believe in Jesus, we will not perish but have eternal life. No? That is the promise of last uh, in John, in last uh, gospel. So in the preparation of the Passover, when he said, when he went to uh, Jerusalem, of course, uh, he did not, uh, he did not forget his uh, friends. No, He visited Martha and Mary. And Lazarus, no? they are they are from Bethany to uh, he, he is now in Jerusalem. So mga kwang kuno ni mga two two kilometers and he from Manikalayo, no? And then they notice that uh, people knows that Jesus because of this visit to Martha and uh, Mary and Lazarus. Because of this, uh, people knows that uh, Jesus was uh, in Jerusalem. So, uh, this is only in the account of the Gospel of John, where people are now preparing for uh, Jesus. They they talk palm palm branches, no. Uh, of course, uh, I w we will not discuss this here, but the, it is in the account only in the Gospel. You cannot see this in the uh, Synoptic Gospel or or the the particular the talk branches, no. Of course, the Palm Sunday is in the Synoptic. Uh, gospel, which we will have this uh, gospel next 
uh, next Sunday. You know. <coughs> so in the Passover, you can see that uh, in the court of the Gentile, no, in the court of the Gentile, there are Greeks that are visiting the temple. No, they also worship the Jewish God, although they are not Judaism, but they believe. No, they believe that the God of kanang Israel or the God of the Jews or Judaism, uh, they believe in them. They believe in the gods that they are there in the Passover to worship God. No. So that is where our gospel uh, talks about the Greek wanted to see Jesus. No, they came to they came to Philip and Andrew. To, it came to Philip first, and uh, Philip said to Andrew that the Greek uh, wanted to uh, see Jesus. No. Of course, uh, you might be wondering why the Greek uh, went to Philip. Because Philip, and the, the name of Philip is uh, a Greek, no? Including Andrew, even including uh, the name of uh, Peter, no? It is uh, um, some uh, Greek uh, uh, name. Remember, uh, it was Andrew who brought Simon to Jesus, and also the following day, Philip also found Nathaniel, even Jesus found Nathaniel. And it was also now uh, uh, Philip who brought Nathaniel or introduced Nathaniel to Jesus. So, you might be asking, the Son of Man to be glorified, no? That is in chapter 7. And uh, he is wanted, uh, and they wanted to arrest him. But he said, my hour has not yet come. No? And in chapter 8 also of John, you can see that uh, he's speaking at the treasury of the temple. He, he is about to be arrested, but he said, the hour has not yet come. And uh, in uh, last uh, Sunday, uh, we have the the poisonous uh, snake that uh, that uh, beaten the complain, uh, complain and murmuring Jews, no? and then Moses uh, put uh, the serpent, uh, bronze serpent, no, uh, in the pool, and all of those that are beaten and just uh, glance or look at the pool, they will, they are all cured. And uh, we say that uh, this is also what happened to Jesus uh, lifted up, died, he suffered and died on the cross in his passion and death. Everyone who look at the sun on the cross, no, find life in them. Jesus was lifted up on the cross in the glory, in the glory of the of the name of our God as an obedient son redeeming his his people no? so here Jesus finally said to Philip and Andrew the hour has come no? the hour has come no? of course if that, uh, that uh, answer will be given to the Greek they, they cannot understand that in the 12th Gospel of John chapters, the hour has not come, but finally, Jesus said, the hour has come. The Greek and other Gentile worshipful sign are signs of the coming of the uh, redemption of Jesus. No? There are signs that uh, Greeks and Gentiles start to worship the God of Israel. Yahweh. And that is the sign of the coming of Jesus to redeem us on the cross. In the Old Testament, glorifying God is only worship, no? purely worship. But uh, in Jesus, in the New Testament, Jesus glorified through the passion, through his passion and death. This is the ultimate, no? This is the ultimate 
Kana na ang in the Old Testament, this is the ultimate praise and worship to the Father. And then Jesus said, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. Jesus is talking about himself. Unless Jesus passion falls to the ground and die. He was buried in the tomb and on third day he rose again. He resurrected. And this is the meaning of the reading and also the meaning of our life. We will not be moving forward in this season of Lent if we will not die ourselves. The season of Lent is given by God in order for us to review our life for the whole year and have this Lent, the season of Lent, in order for us to see for ourselves what are the things that we have to die for. What are the things that we have to bury that we may be able to share the glory of God in the resurrection? Then we will become a new people of God, a new creation. In verse 25, he who loves his life loses it, and he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me, and where I am, there shall my servant be, be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. No? I just would like to, to highlight hate. He who hates his life, no? Na, naka, ka na na-experience, ba mo nga, nasupo yun mo sa inyong kinabuhi? Naglagot yun mo sa inyong kinabuhi? No? He who hates, what does it mean? What does, uh, what does this kind of hate mean? No? Hates means separating or detaching ourselves. God is talking to us in this season of Lent. We have to hate this life. We have to hate those that are not necessary in this life. Those that are not essential of this life. We need to be separated and detached. No? Like, uh, well, <laughs> he said, uh, those who love mother and father more than me, no? to the extent <laughs> to that, no? attachment. Uh, it doesn't mean to say that you don't <laughs> have to love your mother and father but you have to be able to know what comes first he said seek ye first the kingdom of God and everything shall be done unto you God first no? if you put God first then everything follows you cannot love your mother, your father. You cannot be grateful to them if you don't love God. It is only to loving God that you will be able to uh, love your father and your mother. Remember, loving your mother and your father is part of the Ten Commandments, no? But what is first? obeying the commandments so in obedience to the commandments in obeying God that is only the loving God in the first place he should be the first so detach not to cling not to cling to life no not to cling to earthly life but embrace the cross Jesus teach us the passion and death and resurrection just like with our ordinary life 
there is always passion no there is always passion you're passionate on doing something your hobby your interest but there is also death, death to that passion because God said you should not be attached otherwise that will become the meaning of your life it would not be Jesus anymore, anymore the highest meaning and purpose of our life but through our attachment through our talent through our will no our time no you cannot give our time anymore of course uh, there are so many justifications that you have but you have to to think about or uh, look at the justifications that you have no are you really putting God first in your life no? in everything that we do after we we just like a grain of wheat we fall we die to our sinfulness we die to our pride we die to our wickedness then there's a redemption or there's a resurrection passion death and resurrection can be an ordinary life that we have no it started from the story of Lent, the story of Jesus in his redemption and after we uh, we have the full holy week holy week celebration then we have a very complete complete uh, set of uh, life that we have to follow a model that we have to follow passion death and resurrection every time that we sin against god we have to go to court, penance and confession and then after the absolution of the priest then we have our resurrection we can live a better life again you know we can be a better person again this life needs to be understand because there is a lot of losses that you have to trade off in this life just like uh, with uh, cooking you may not be able to enjoy cooking or the one cooking food for you or the the, the ingredients that uh, being used in cooking without first uh, having your meal having your dish you eat first the dish enjoy the dish then you will appreciate the cook you will appreciate the ingredients and everything even the table setting no or the ambience just like with uh, with life you cannot experience the length in your life you cannot experience passion death and resurrection of your life if you have not experienced the cross in your life you have not experienced how you carry your cross or identify your cross the burden that carries with it and then after that you experience how God how God was able to relate with you in those times of difficulty in your life in this time that you carry your cross on these times in the birds of discouragement of your life discouragement to give up giving hope to you helping you to carry your burden if you have not experienced that then you will not appreciate the cross because the cross is the center of our christian life you cannot go directly to resurrection without passion and death you cannot even go to advent or ordinary seasons of this liturgical calendar or life as a christian as a catholic without really going through lent
we will appreciate Lent if we have to seriously undergo the passion, death, and resurrection. For all you know, you have been through Lent for several years, several months already. It is the time for us to see ourselves, how God have really helped us, how God is working in our life especially in this season of Lent that, is, that falls in the pandemic time where already one year, no, the time of the pandemic. We see God working. We see the cross. We carry the cross. We carry the burden, the heavy burden. And God is there. Loss is part of our life. Losing, living, and letting go. This is where we grow. No? We lost. Why we lost? We lost because of our patience. We lost because of our just uh, giving favor and uh, just uh, uh, putting our pride behind. We lost because we uh, we give, we share, no? We lost because despite the the sinfulness of other people, despite of what they have done to us, we have we have not lost control of ourselves. But uh, we just uh, go on. We just uh, go on with this life, no? and this is where we grow. This is how God will let us grow, and that is uh, one of the real realization for us to uh, to see in our celebration of Lent, no. Remember the first reading, no? He said, I will make a new covenant with, uh, with uh, people who are going to be obedient with me, no? I will be making a new covenant with Jesus with the passion and death and resurrection of Jesus, I will make a new covenant. And in this new covenant, is I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. That is in Isaiah chapter 31 to 34. This is the message for us in the season of Lent. God in the passion and death and resurrection of Jesus, he will make a new people, no? a new covenant, a new people, a people of God. An Easter, an Easter people of God. In the second reading, although he was a son, he learned obedience. Through what he suffered and being made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him. No? Although he was a son, he learned obedience, meaning although he was a son, he is obedient and show it to us. He is obedient to the Father until death on the cross for our sinfulness, our uh, redemption, though he suffered a lot. And being made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all of us who obeys him. And this is what he also wanted from us. We need to be obedient because God will make a new covenant with us after 
the resurrection of Jesus. We become a new person, a new people. As we approach the ending of our Lenten journey, we, would, we should step back to see if we have pro progress on our road to Calvary. The question we should ask of ourselves is, are we just one of the spectators watching Jesus going by, carrying his cross, or are we truly one of his disciples begging forgiveness for our part in this sin? Something to think about during your prayer, prayer time as you celebrate the season of Lent as you prepare for the Holy Week. Thank you very much, uh, brothers and sisters, and God bless us all. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. O glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen.